Hi, Tubal King. I'm going to talk a little bit about parting tools and uh, cutoff tools. It's one and the same thing, and uh, they can be used for making grooves as well. But this is a subject I've kind of shied away from because I have a lot of trouble with it myself, and I know that many of you out there do. And uh, so I'm going to see if I can clarify a few things, and I'll. Uh, this is going to be a long video, probably divided into three parts, and uh, we'll talk about it, and then we're going to make a bunch of cuts. But I, I venture a guess that most of you uh, home machinists out there have tool holders similar to this. Uh, this is a, a bent one, which would be a, uh, a left hand. Uh, that's the only one I have left because my brother made me throw them all away. And if you're having trouble, it's probably because you're using this type of holder. I will use that uh, on my atlas lathe, but I, I hate these. They are uh, probably the best they could do around the turn of the century, but it's really old technology. And uh, I wanted to say that the men were sniffing cocaine when they designed those, but I think that's before they had drugs. But uh, if you can afford it, get it in your budget and get this type of tool holder, the Aloris type, or it can even be an import, and it'll be so much better. Than, uh, than these. Here's three of the most important things that you need to know about uh, cutoff tools. Is you need rigidity, and number two, you need rigidity, and number three, you need rigidity. Really important. Now, you need rigidity in your uh, tool holder and the way the tool is held in that holder. And the tool must be held choked up as short as possible with a minimum amount sticking out. Uh, you need rigidity uh, in the way you hold your work. That is, the work must be, uh, uh, or the cut must take place right near the chuck or where the uh, work is held. Of course, we can't do any of this between centers. We're talking here about uh, work that's held in the chuck. And thirdly, we need rigidity in the machine. And if you have some of the lighter weight machines that are made for the home market, they tend to be problematic for this. They might even be underpowered. So if you've used larger and heavier machines, that you might be spoiled, like I am, and uh, shy away from cutting off in the, uh, in the smaller lathes because there's just an awful lot of things that can uh, chatter around and move on a lighter lathe. For instance, my Atlas lathe probably weighs uh, three or four hundred pounds versus the Clausing lathe weighing well over a thousand pounds and that extra mass can absorb the vibration. But also in your machine make sure that you uh, do not have any extra uh, compound sticking out or or loose gibs or anything like that will uh, also be a problem. Here's an assortment of different cutoff tools that I, I have in my drawer and I don't know where I even got so many of them, but uh, some of them uh, are uh, th wider or thicker than others. So avoid the eighth inch uh, cutoff tools if you have a smaller machine. Try to get into the 30, 3 30 seconds uh, width. Eighth inch is probably so thin that uh, you might break the, the cutter. Uh, they come in different widths too, depending on what uh, tool holder you're going to use. I also have uh, some carbide ones, I'm going to talk about them later on, but we'll just deal with the high speed because I'm sure that's probably what most of you have. Now the, the angles, I made this little wooden teaching aid, it's actually made out of shim shingles, but if you look at it, I'm not sure that, whole, that shows up very well, but it's uh, wider here or thicker here than what it is near the bottom. And we put these two squares on there, I think you can see that. I'm going to wobble that a little bit. So we got that clearance, and uh, there are uh, some people that also like to uh, grind them here and give themselves a little more clearance. I don't know if that's going to show up, but removing that amount. Now I'm going to post uh, someplace on this video uh, a website where the original uh, Atlas lathe tool holder and uh, blades are shown. It was the actual uh, instructions that were packed with it, so that might be interesting for some of you that have that style of, of tool holder. Uh, some of these tools, uh, this is Empire. I don't know 
if that's going to show up. But this is all clearance down here. That's kind of a nice kind. I'm going to use one of those. Now when you grind the ends of them, looking at it from right here, or on the wooden one, you need this angle here. That's all you need to grind. You don't need to grind the top. So just hold that up against your grinding wheel. That one might have a little extra uh, clearance on it, but it still will work. I don't believe that that's that critical, especially if you're not going to make an awful lot of cuts. Notice that on the, uh, this is a genuine Alorus here, that that tool holder holds the tool at about a five degree angle. See how slanted it is compared to the import one. I do like this one, seems to work real well. And that uh, heaviness there can absorb some of the chatter. And repeating now that never have any more stick out here than is necessary. Wear your big face shield when you use these. I have had them break and they scare the heck out of you when they break because they, they shatter. When you grind the end of your cutoff tool, uh, normally we're going to uh, grind it perfectly straight across as opposed to this one at an angle. But when you grind it straight across, quite often the piece will. Uh, come off of the lathe, the waste stock here, and uh, this tit will be left on this piece. And if that's a piece of waste stock, you could care less because you're going to throw it away. But I've worked on turret lathes where we're making tens of thousands of uh, pieces and each one then is cut off. And uh, we always ground the tools like this at a little bit of an angle so that as you're feeding in there, it completes the cut on, the, on this piece, which wouldn't be waste stock, it would be a, a usable piece and it uh, gets faced off rather cleanly, drops off out of the way, and then the cut continues to take the tit off of the, the piece because we're working with rod stock here that's 12 feet long and uh, making many, many pieces out of it. So you can grind them either way. This is a nice way to do it because both pieces will have the tit removed from them. Now, uh, in all my work on turret lays where I probably made millions of parts using power feed with flood coolant, it was never a problem doing cutoff. You never even thought of it. But most of those cutoff tools on a turret lathe are mounted upside down on the back part of the lathe. The, uh, we don't even have that type of uh, capability on most of our lathes. Uh, turret lathes uh, usually put the cutoff tool upside down in the back and then you feed out in order to cut it off. And that's very effective.